or shut. Something happens through the day, you're, you got 1200 PSI on that machine, mm -hmm. you get excited, you bust this loose and you forgot to do this. Uh, as soon as you break it, those o rings are going to lose their seal. And get safety glasses, you're going to have you stuff on your face, yeah. you're going to drop this because you're going to want to get that stuff out of your eyes. <laughs> you're going to come back and you're going to see part of your whip hanging out of a puddle of, uh, or a mound of foam. So, it only takes a second. Take the manifold off the gun. As soon as you take it off, have your carb. This is going to stay on the hoses. So your hoses are going to still be attached. Hit, you're going to have residual fluid down in those recessed ports there. Hit it with carb cleaner real quick. And then I always take the, uh, the two lithium grease, put it on my finger. Just fill the hole in. So use two different fingers in case I have any A on one and B on the other and just put a puddle of that lithium grease in there and keep any moisture from getting in it. Are those quick connects from the hose, or are they screwed? No, but those, those, that's going to stay on the hose unless something bad happens. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's always going to, you know, I think that's why I clean them out real good, hit them with lithium grease, you can hang it up there the way it is now, mm -hmm. and uh, you're good to go. Right. First thing, I'm going to uh, take my A side check valve assembly out. The screen's on. When you do this, this is going to, you're just going to have fluid on here. You're gonna have fluid down in that port still. Uh, hit it real good with carburetor cleaner. Then I'm gonna take it and disassemble it. There's also a drawing here, a breakdown. Oh, yeah. Clean it all up good. Yeah, now get it in the A side especially. Get it, you wanna you want to break it down. Get it spotless. Uh, check ball is in there. In and case, this is the every week thing, or yeah, the every day? I would do it every every week unless you have jobs 23 days or whatever. Okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay. Shut it down like that does. And, but if you're doing a job on Tuesday this week, Thursday next week, I'd go ahead and clean it, clean, clean it, do it, and be done with it. Uh, again, there's going to be residual fluid in there. Okay. I'm going to take the carb cleaner, brake clean, get, get that fluid on. out of there. I'm gonna do. I do one side at a time. I always get the A out of the picture. Mm -hmm. Take the air cap. Is the this this is a used air cap. I just put it on there. So we had to borrow it for a customer. But yeah, A is the bad side. A side's marked. Oh, I can see that on there. The check valve. Yeah, but oh, yeah. A is marked there. And then I take this training cap off. The A side uh, side seal assembly is marked. Get that out, take the screwdriver. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit more difficult with, with, with fluid in it and yeah. you put heat to it. Again, got it out, you're going to have residual, you know, or trash can, whatever. Hit it with the carb cleaner. Mm -hmm. See how easy that is? That, that's the hardest bit, is the biggest screw up that I see is this right here. It doesn't come out that easy, so people go and grab the channel locks, vice yep. grips. Anything, you, you put something down in that hole, unless it's a piece of plastic, you're, you're going to put a burr on it. So when you put the gun back together, if it doesn't leak, you're going to start grooving the, the mixing chamber. Each time you trigger it, you're going to start with, uh, wearing it out. So the best thing to do, if you can't get it out, use the spring inside. Mm -hmm. Go around. And just keep as long as you get it up, if you can get it up here, you can get a lot more leverage. Mm -hmm. okay. Here. But don't touch the face yep. of that hole. And that's all part of the mole rings that every month or so we got to... Yeah. Yep. Again, you're going to have some residual fluid in there, you're going to hit it again, and uh, now it doesn't matter if the gun falls over like this, I guess it doesn't matter. You, you can't mix, but you know, if, if I took you know, both these out and it fell over like this, you're gonna mix this is going to drip down, it's going yeah. to make foam. So I, I always start with the A side because it's a bad, uh, it's chemical, get it out of the way. B side. Uh, same thing. Parts are identical. The only difference is the A's marked. A side's got the A on it. B side doesn't have anything. Okay. I always try to keep the same parts. The A's always side. on the left. B's always on the right. But the gun's upside down, so it's backwards. But you get the point. Yeah, this is simple everything. Clean it off again. Spray it down real good. 
hit that port, you're gonna have residual fluid in there, hit it, and then move on to your uh, B side side seal. Do you prefer carb cleaner over? I, I've just never messed with brake clean, but a lot of guys have come and use it. And I, I know what they, they I know what they mean because it's cheaper. Is it okay? Yeah, you get a taller bottle for. So again, you know me for a Dutch. dollar less. So. <laughs> I don't see you forking money off of Well, I'm just saying, like. <laughs> <laughs> again, you're gonna have residual fluid in there. Hit it again. And that's this is your ninety percent done with your cleaning. Does it seem as bad as that picture? And out of out of all this, the, the the stuff that's out there, this is the most crucial part to. Is that what you're saying? That we to you being up and running? Yeah. Yeah. This is like taking the, care of this. Okay. Yep. And it's not it's not hard to do. No, I mm -hmm. it takes a little bit of time. People get lazy or it was a long day and you I thought it was way more than this, honestly. Well, then, you're looking at that. He's that's yeah. totally well, this yeah, well, well once I get this off, this is your fluid housing. I'll again I'll douse it. Yeah. Flush out real good just to make sure you didn't miss anything. Okay. There's also <laughs> If you have the stem on the brake cleaner, the car cleaner, there's a hole. Oh yeah. So what has the fluid? You open up your valves on your fluid or your uh, manifold. That lets chemical. It pushes past the ball. The chemical comes inside and gets filtered from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Chemical flows down that port. Mm -hmm. When you have your your uh, side seal assembly in there, that mm -hmm. port lines up in between your two O rings. So you have fluid that rotates around, and then there's those four holes. Down. And then, like I said, that seal. You have your mixing chamber and that side seal. Guns ready for 3,500 psi, and it's the only thing. Just those machine surfaces. There's no gaskets, no O rings, no. There's nothing there. So that's why. Marred those air, the ones that are all marred up, there's no way. Yeah. When you hit those valves, that fluid is just going to come up yeah. and try to go through every part of this gun. Now, when, you know, when you're not triggered, you have your side seals here, sitting here. Mm -hmm. So whatever pressure you have in the machine, if that was a high pressure machine, you got 3,500, you got 3,500 sitting right there between those two surfaces. You pull the trigger. The mixing chamber slides mm -hmm. back, lines the holes. Lines the holes up. Now you have the fluid comes through the mixing chamber out the tank. When it's gouged up, that shit's gonna go backwards, forwards, top. It's bottom. gonna yeah, it's just gonna go yep. inside here and kind of wrap around everything. And that's why I show this port. Uh, if you ever do cross it over and you get foam in it, if you remember that that changes yeah, directions, directions. And don't just start drilling away and spend seven hundred four dollars for for just this. No extras, just that part. We don't want to do that. This is your mixing chamber. All the mixing chambers are marked on the top. This is a AR2929, which is like, a, I think it's two sizes smaller than what's actually in your guns. Uh, but when you put the mixing chamber in, if you're holding the gun like you're spraying, the letters are always going to be up. Yeah. Yep. And that's what that's the part we got to replace when we want to spray something bigger than the 60 yep, inch chamber. Say you're you're going to do a pole building, whatever, and you throw yeah. the 52, 52 in there. They're right. going to get more output, so you can get yeah. in and out quicker. Yeah. But for the 60 on center, I would say the, what you have there is is good enough without getting over spray on everything. So you can't. You got to scrape it off. You got to clean it up, and you can't put it back in the yeah. room. It's waste. Yeah. Yeah. That's all the fluid. That's that. There's. That's that's the ball game right there. That's that's what it's all about. Is get that taking care of that, and keeping that clean. This is just this is air. The air that comes in. You have a, a trigger spool here, and you got a piston here that drives the mixing chamber back and forth. Uh, hopefully, you never get fluid back in this. So it's not common. It does happen. But, uh, usually, it's self-inflicted when it does. The inside of the guns, the new brand new ones that ain't been never been used, they're all tightened up, ready to go. Right? I mean. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm sure we don't have to. You got your uh, your fitting for your air connection, your spring, and then it's got a little uh, notch there. Pull your trigger spool out. Hand tight. 
you might have to, when the, from the factory they come in kind of tight sometimes, you might have to, if you do have to break it loose with anything, put a rag or cardboard or something between it so you don't get yep. teeth marks and signal channel locks. Take half the black oxide coating off of it. Yep. Yeah, uh, just an air chamber. Yeah, these I, w I would. If if something happened with the handle and you plugged the thing up with foam, I would say definitely you take these two pieces out and you you know you can get a drill bit kit or you can go to Ace and uh, you know to make sure that those ports are cleaned up. This, uh, like I said, over time you get over spray up in there. If you do, you know, it start to get sluggish triggers. Take it out, let it soak overnight, and continue spraying. You know, put it in the next day, you can do what some people do, and just take your screwdriver and whack it. You can just take it out. So, like I said, so yeah. Easy enough just to take out also. Yeah. The air piston, that, 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 that's, that's it, though. Taking it apart. You've cleaned the stuff up as you're gone. Mm -hmm. So, next thing you're going to, you know, I usually, I'll take my grease, get a puddle of grease, and then. The stuff here, here goes around with yep. all them little bush or roll yep. rings. I'm not going to do it. No. There's an, I've almost got a little off of it, or grease off of it. But uh, each o-ring, when you're putting it back together, put a layer of grease on it. Air piston can go in two ways, but you have the flats on the side, so it goes in like this or like this. It doesn't matter. Put it in, give it a push to, to engage it or seat the o-ring. Safety cap, safety. Push it in, turn it, rotate it to the left. That turns the safety off. And to the right, turns the safety on. It does is it's going to uh, it limits the stroke of the air piston, so the mixing chamber can't back far, come back far enough to actually let those side seals engage. Uh, anytime you're setting the gun down, just get act like it's a firearm. Uh, yeah. If you're in a lift or anything and you put it down and it hits one of the rails on the side, there's no trigger guard, so it's just going to start spraying falling all over the place. If you ever lose air pressure, the gun for some reason. Uh, Zero operated manifold. So if you lose, say you're spraying, for some reason your compressor, something happens to it and you don't have any air. When you let go, it's not going to release because it doesn't have the pressure to put the piston back. Smack it. That'll that push the next seat chamber forward. forward so the okay. side seals are. We have some on our side of the building from one of those senses. Uh, push it down so far and then. There's a counterbore there. Don't do it on that thin uh, bridge, but use yeah. your counterbore, push it down. If it's properly seated, you'll have about a quarter of an inch sticking out the face of the handle. Spring. So when I put it back together, it's hand tight. The only thing I'll do is I'll use this on the air cap just to get a little bit on it, but you can't get a lot because it's, uh, it's on an angle. Yeah, mixing chamber, it's marked A, B, and also description of what size chamber it is. We'll put it in, it doesn't lock in place, it just kind of floats in there. So numbers up. <clears throat> Do we have to take the gun down that far to put that in it? Or is it chip tip just screw off and we put the new tip in it? Yeah, what this ring actually sets the preload on these against that mixing chamber. You can, I'd say no. Okay. It's not a good idea because when you try to put this back in, with them, you have, you have these, and you, there's a good chance you're gonna okay. mar them up. This is the hardest part. Uh, you have the squares inside the fluid housing that you have to line up for the mixing chamber, and then you also have these undercuts here that these bosses go into. Oh, yeah. So it, the easiest way I found try to study with your palm. At this point, you've cleaned everything, so as long as you put the parts back in where they belong, uh, it doesn't matter. Check ball goes in first. Again, if there's ever any doubt, you have this. It'll put the check ball, mm -hmm. our spring, our little retaining screw. It actually looks pretty. As long as it goes in with your thumb like that, that's all you need to do. You don't need to get a screwdriver torque anything down as long as it's below I usually set it right where that lead in chamfer is. Put our spring on. It's A side, A. Those screens typically get pretty plugged up. 
you're going to go, for, you, you have a 10 pack in the, in the, your toolbox, you probably use nine of them on your eight. Well, it depends on how well you clean it. Okay. If you keep up on your cleaning, they're going to last a lot longer. If you don't, what they do is, again, that ISO, where it seats here, and inside there where these are in the screen, mm -hmm. it'll it'll grab it. Yeah. And then usually you got to take a razor knife. The more oh. you keep up on it, the less I gotcha. you have to do. He said, in the check ball, spring, chamber screw. And I overlay all these, all these little rings. As you're putting it back together, you want to put a, the lithium grease mm -hmm. on them. A side uh, tight seal assembly, spring first, and then the side that's uh, that the O-ring's closest to goes in first. You should be able to you got a nice machine surface there. And just a regular machine surface is going to go towards the mixing chamber. Same thing on the B. That always check when you put them in, make sure that you got good springs working yeah. good. Yeah. So that spring, when you put this on, that's what actually is setting that preload for that that metal metal surface between the side seal and the mixing chamber. And that's a lot of times the, the engage better go backwards till you fill a click in, and and that's it. Like I said, it's pushing it in, so it might feel like it's kind of goofy, but uh, you know, always put with the lithium grease on those threads too, because you actually start getting thread marks. On the outside of the, uh, on the outside of these. Oh, I gotcha. Because it's actually it's taking and compressing those springs. Yep. What's that tip? Just a protector for the end of it. It's air cap. Uh, it doesn't do any. It's not like a paint gun to where if you change yeah. your fins this way, it sprays yep. this way, or if you have them this way, it's this way. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with that. It also. When you're when you're not triggered, and you have airflow coming through the gun. It's going through the the hole inside. My side seals are here. My mixing chamber holes are here. So that air comes in, goes through those side seal holes, and out through the tip. <clears throat> when you're when you trigger the gun, this is they call it the clean off air. I'll tell you if you read a manual, to take it down till it seats and back it off a quarter to a half a turn. What that does when you do pull the trigger. It lets air come through this port. Everything on the front here is sealed up at this time. So that air enters oh, these four holes. Mm -hmm. And that actually, when it, when that's on the mixing chamber, it's supposed to help keep the tip cleaned off. Oh, yeah. So when you're triggered, you got the Pushing foam coming out, you, you have that air coming out too. <clears throat> Makes sense. I guess they knew what they were doing when they designed that, didn't they? Yeah. Like I said, that's the only thing I'll, I'll use this just to, you can't get a lot because on that side it's on an angle. Mm -hmm. so you, you can't get a lot of pressure on it. And you got this, a protective cap for your, uh, for your Zerk fitting. <coughs> oh. <coughs> I went right on the wrong <coughs> oh. Oh. Sorry. <coughs> Holy cow. <coughs>